So within my 70 plus hours of playing Hogwarts Legacy, I've jotted down a few things I wish I knew before playing in regards to tips and tricks that can help new players to the game. And well, that's what I bring you today, guys. Now, guys, if you do enjoy this video, leaving a like really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more Hogwarts, be sure to subscribe. Okay, so these I've jotted down may not be in any particular order. And also guys, if you would like to add any tips or tricks for brand new players, please leave a comment down below. I mean, these are the things that I just wish I knew, but they ain't necessarily an absolute must, but they probably can make life a lot easier for a new player or a early on player. So let's get into it. Okay, so one thing I can't stress enough is, is to progress the main story questline. For the first 10 to 15 hours of your general gameplay, this is what I'd do. This is what I'd stick straight to because along this way, guys, and the way this game works is you unlock many of the important things from this progress in the main story. Nothing in reality is tied to a side quest until you already have what you need. Things like the broom, the room of requirement, and as well as all the major spells you'll need for exploration. These are all tied mainly to the story quest line. So if I were you, especially for the first 10 to 15 hours, stick to this. Just play the main game and get things done. I can't stress how important the broom is. This is an absolute must because when it comes to exploration, without your broom, it is just, well, a pain in the ass. So yes, guys, stick to the main story quest line. Side quest ain't going anywhere. Get your broom, get your room of requirement, and you'll be good to go. Another thing I'll state for early players is Revelio is your best friend. Early on, this will help you discover many, many things that will assist you going forward into this game. Things like finding gold, things like finding gear, things like finding absolutely everything. And well, when you use that Revelio and you hear a bell sound, that means there's a field page guide right near you. These reward you XP, and this is very important for you leveling Revelio. up. So yes, Revelio, in regards to looting, Finding that gold, finding that gear, earning that XP is amazing. Now, if you have a one of those new PlayStation controllers or an Xbox Elite, what I'd do is I'd assign it to one of the buttons on the back of the controller. So you can just spam it out because it absolutely is a must within this game. It is your best friend. Now, Revelio can also be used on those brooms and mounts. So when you're flying low to the ground, use that Revelio and you may just discover something you need. Also, while you're on your broom, people, pressing in that left thumbstick will give your broom autopilot. So if you need to fly somewhere real far, you haven't got that flue flame open, just aim in that direction, press in your left thumbstick, and the game will fly for you. I actually didn't realize this until probably about 35 hours into my playthrough. So yeah, a great little tip. Now, another thing I will state for early players is not to dismantle that gear unless you absolutely have to. Doesn't matter what level the gear is, if it's lower than your currently assigned gear, don't dismantle it because gold in this game is very important. And well, all the gear you don't need, you can sell. As soon as you get to Hogsmeade people, you can sell said gear. So definitely do not dismantle it. I'd also take advantage of the room of requirement. As soon as you can set things up, as small as it may be, potion stations, the enchanted loom, get this done. Now the room requirement isn't a far into the game mission, you do it for Professor Weasley, and as soon as you've done this quest, you have the uh, room of requirement open up for you. You can then progress and expand upon the room of requirement for doing Deke's quest lines. The first one being the elf, the knapsack, and the loom. This will give you access to the knapsack, and then you can go and capture those beasts, which is absolutely vital for this game. Now you will eventually come to the stage where you can unlock talents, and as soon as you can, guys, if I was you, I'd open up more of those spell diamonds. These are absolutely vital to the player and just make that life so much easier. So when you can, guys, open up those spell slots, those spell diamonds. Another thing I'd say as well, guys, is don't use all your materials until you get relatively near end game. Yes, I know you may want to take advantage of leveling up gear, but at the end of the day, as you're playing, you'll just keep getting gear much, much better and higher than what you previously have. So using materials, vital materials, hard to come by materials and leveling up gear when you're just a low level, it really is a waste of time in my opinion. And with the transmog system in this game, meaning you can lock how you want to lock and how gear isn't really limited. I mean, one legendary piece can be the same as any other legendary piece, especially when you can apply those traits to it. I really wouldn't stress about gear until you get near that end game. So don't waste those materials, in my opinion. Now, another thing I will state, and that is, this is actually something many players still to this day don't realize. Max level in this game is a level 40. 
You cannot reach a level 40 unless you do all the required challenges in this game. XP in this game is tied to challenges. For instance, Dark Wizards, kill 100 of these, you earn XP for each. As soon as you get that challenge completed for killing 100, which is the last Dark Wizard challenge, you will earn no more XP for killing Dark Wizards. This is the same for every instance and every enemy and every quest and every beast you catch. More or less everything in this game is tied to a challenge. Once that challenge is done, no more XP can be acquired from said things. So keep that in mind. If you need easy XP, if you need a quick level, simply check out your challenges, look at the ones you can do easily, get them done, earn the XP, level up. But yes, your level in this game is tied directly to those challenges, and that's the only way you can level up in this game, so keep that in mind. But there's a great way in exploiting said challenges to get them done quicker to earn XP faster, and those are those combat challenges. You can use any of the free if you own the Dark Arts pack, battle arenas scattered across the map. There's three in total like I said for the Dark Arts pack but two is available to all players and they are seen on screen now. If you come here guys, take out the waves of enemies these battle arenas offer, you will complete many of the challenges within that combat challenge tab. I mean you will earn fast amounts of XP, easy levels, no sweat at all. Another trick I wish I knew about earlier as well is the difficulty in this game. Whether you play on story, easy, normal or hard, it makes no difference to the XP that you earn, the loot that you earn. Playing on story just means there's no challenge at all within the game. Fighting enemies, they're non apparent. Capturing beasts, it's just look at that beast and press one button. There's no challenge whatsoever. So if you are struggling at any instance in the game, don't feel like you're doing a disservice by changing that difficulty down because it makes no difference to your overall progress. You can also check out those field guides on enemy weaknesses. So if there's a certain enemy you want to learn more about, that field guide is your best friend, so keep that in mind. Also, we know certain enemies have certain shields. We know how shields work. If it's a purple shield, you need to use a purple spell to break that shield. But if you haven't got a purple spell within your build or your setup or your spell diamond, you can throw objects at enemies to break said shields. So keep that in mind. Combat in this game is one of the best parts about it. And the more you can learn about it, the better. Now earning money in this game is an absolute must, but the best way to do this is by farming those beasts and then selling them to the brood and peck vendor within Hogsmeade. Again, as an early on player, progress the game until you unlock the room of requirement. Do Deke's first quest who is located within the room of requirement, you will then unlock the knapsack. The knapsack then can be used to farm beasts and sell beasts. You get 120 for a single beast and you start with 20 or 21 slots within your beast inventory menu. So that's a lot of money you can get from just farming beasts and selling them in real fast time too. The best place to do this guys is this spot on the map right here, this puff skin den. Come here guys, farm all puff skins within this little cave. Come to this point on the map, skip time by going into your map menu and pressing that right thumbstick in. Do this once, then go back to that puff skin den, capture weight. When your inventory is full, go to the Hogsmeade vendor, the brood and peck, sell away, earn fast money. I wouldn't worry about money real early on, I'd progress the game like I said earlier, but when you're at the stage where you need that money, this is by far the best farm in the game. Now when it comes to actually farming beasts, you will sometimes come across those shiny beasts. Shiny beasts in this game are just a different colour, with a star next to their name. They offer nothing else as far as I'm aware, in regards to breeding, in regards to selling for more money, in regards to anything. They're literally just a pretty colour. That doesn't mean things won't change in the future, but just keep that in mind. Don't stress yourself trying to look for all shiny beasts because they make no difference to gameplay. Now, if you have a certain vendor who sells a certain item and you want to purchase said item in abundance, but said vendor keeps running out, you can skip time to replenish said vendor. This isn't something I've actually worried about myself because I progress to the room requirement where I could grow all my stuff myself. But skipping time, I do believe by three days, will replenish a vendor's stock, meaning you can buy a mass amount if you have that gold of any said item. Now, if you're short on gear space and you want more of it, you do this by doing the Merlin trials scattered around the map. Now, the first Merlin trial you will come across early on within the main quest line. Once you've done this, you'll see them open up across the open world. Do these Merlin trials and you will earn extra gear space. Ancient magic hotspots scattered around the map will earn you more ancient magic meters. These are again amazing for that combat, making life so much easier. And the more of these you have, the better in my opinion. And lastly guys, something I wish I knew about much earlier on, 
is the legendary and trait chest trick. So there are many of these legendary chests across the game which guarantee you a legendary piece of gear but you can exploit these chests to basically maximize gear output so you can have more or less full legendary gear. And to do this guys, as soon as you find one of these legendary gear chests, simply make a manual save before opening it. Then open a chest. If you don't get a gear piece that you need for a certain specific slot, simply reload that save you just made, open a chest again. Do this until you get what you want. Now, like I said, these legendary chests can be found more or less all over the map. But what I would say is if I were you, I probably wouldn't open them straight away. When you come across these, make a note of where it is, probably take a screenshot, and then go back to it at end game. This guarantees legendary gear. So if, they, if you get to end game and there's a specific slot you need a legendary piece for, you can use one of these chests to take advantage of that. So keep that in mind. This also works with every single chest in the game. Whether it's a ornate chest, which gives you those traits, these come from those bandit camps, whether it's those chests those butterflies take you, which can give you certain items for decoration within your room of requirements of Avarium. I mean, this works on every chest in the game, no matter what it is. So yes, keep that in mind, guys. But those are the tips and tricks I wish I knew before playing. Would have made my life a whole lot easier. But now as I go into making my second player for my second playthrough, now I know all this information, life will be a lot easier for me. So yes, there we have it guys. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more Hogwarts, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.